This segment is brought to you by CrashPlan. I'm here at DEF CON 2013 with Jordan here from Rackspace, who's looking for everyone to come by and hack Hack him? You want to get hacked? Well, the ring, not me specifically. I don't know how well that would go. Okay, so we probably have to set this up because we are both very lucky yeah. to, be, uh, to be wearing prototypes of the ring. Indeed, the ring, which on you, I see, fits a normal finger. On me, it's my little sausage finger pinky. So I'm not wearing it on my pinky because I'm a douchebag. It's just the only finger it fits on. But I love this because I threw it out on the show uh, like last year. I was like, hey, you know it'd be awesome if when you're holding your phone and you've got a ring right there, it changes the authentication mechanism. Maybe, oh, I now trust that it's my owner's hand, so I only want to swipe instead of a pin code or things of that nature. And lo and behold, uh, at a meetup in London, a guy comes up to me and is like, dude, Here's the prototype. So thank you, because this is awesome. All right, so uh, tell me about the ring. Uh, so far, I mean, it's been really quite interesting. It's uh, one of the first implementations I've seen that actually has some semblance of security on it. Uh, since it has both tags that are on the same frequency, like a long range read, you get both bits. And we're, when we say tags, we're talking about this is NFC, so near field communications. We're talking, what, 16 megahertz, I want to say. It's really low power, and this is passive, so there's no battery inside of my ring. Yeah, exactly, which makes it really interesting. It gives it like a one to two millimeter read range, which is much smaller than most cards, things like that, because it's a special taggy designed specifically for the ring. So because it's so small and so low powered, it makes stealing it basically be a contact operation. Um, one of the hacks somebody actually tried earlier was uh, a little bit of a relay, which were great for cards. They could actually get it at about six inches, uh, but they weren't even able to do it with contact with the ring. Uh, because there is so little power used in it, so. Yeah, and so I guess the idea of uh, of the security here is that you know um, you you need to wear the ring. It's your second factor of authentication, right? Exactly. Yeah, it, I would never want to make something like this your primary factor of authentication, but it is definitely something that you can use to be you know much more secure, and then add it with some lesser authentication because you can store 144 bytes on it. Um, so you can kind of play with that. Like one thing I'm playing with is actually using the ring plus uh, a one-time pad on the phone to then like display an encoded QR. So you'd actually have two factors through your ring and phone and then be able to do visual login, stuff like that. I think some things like that will be really interesting once you see the rings on the market. Because right now you don't see a lot of that because there really is no wearable NFC stuff that is uh, you know, at all secure. So once that comes out, I'm really interested to see how that market goes. And now how is this more secure though? Because it is read-write. Somebody actually came up to me at a party and was like, oh, and started trying to overwrite my ring. So, Because right now, the way that it is, is I can go up to somebody's phone, and if I hold it, it'll take them to you know twitter.com slash hack5darren. And then on the other side of the ring, you just rotate that guy there. I can take them to, say, the pineapple web interface or other fun parlor tricks like that. But the, the way that I'm able to program the ring is with the NFC Ring app on Android, and I just touch it to my phone and it programs to do that. So I'm at a party, and some hacker's like, oh, and he reads it. He comes back to me and like, thankfully my friend Sebastian like, no, no, no pulling my hand aside because he's trying to put Goatsy on my hand. <laughs> so uh, it's, it's because it's a physical interaction, right? He had to have been basically holding your hand at that point, so. Uh, Ca caressing. Yeah, sorry, sorry, lovingly, gently. Um, so because you have the public and private side, the, the public side, somebody, which is what I've basically termed it, but um, the public side, somebody could like sort of come swipe up against you, right? But when you're using the private side, it's on the inside of your hand. So getting access to that is, is not going to be something that's easily done. I've actually had somebody try to, to slip a little reader up inside of my hand while I was just standing there. But because your hand sort of naturally curves, it touches your finger and your finger jerks away. So they have to have your ring within a millimeter of their reader or writer for about a second. Which at that point, you're basically, if they wanted it that bad, they could just steal your ring. Right. That's really interesting that you mentioned that. By the way, would you like a Red Bull? Oh, that's pretty close to your ring. <laughs> yeah, so but look, at, look at where it is. So if you actually see this, uh, it's when I hold it, when, and maybe it's just me, but it's on the bottom, you actually wouldn't be able to get a read right there because the tag is in the middle, and I could show you with my phone. Yeah, but m mine's on my index finger, so. Right, so it's still really specific. They'd have to know exactly where you were going to hold it. You know, you're right, because when, when you're, even when you're just trying to do this on a phone, you have to know where the G-spot is. Yeah, exactly. Like on, on, my, uh, on my note, it's literally, it literally has to be on the X, which is oh, appropriate. Okay, so that's the Note 1. I have the Note 2 where it's at the top. Yours yeah. is on the battery. It's right at the X. If it's within like even a quarter of an inch outside of that, I get no read. So it's which is, in this case, is actually a feature. Exactly, exactly. And then uh, anybody that's tried to do any long-range stuff, they haven't been able to get either the other side through my thick little fingers or because they're, they're getting both tags back. So there is some noise reduction that can be done, but it's one of those things that it's a, a new tech and a new market, and I think this will help sort of 
push that forward and it's something I'm really interested to see. So yeah, I would love to see this bundled with other kind of products as part of their, you know, uh, just, just part of the norm because once you start accepting like second factor as, you know, I think this is actually going to do a lot for second factor if it can be sold in such a way that this is such a fa uh, fashionable hacker accessory. If you can start making it like, oh, buy this phone and it comes with a ring that unlocks it, um, that could just start opening people's minds to like, oh, wait, there's something other than me entering in my password that I use on everything? Right, yeah, it's, it's a whole new realm of wearable security, essentially, which I don't really think exists beyond, like, clunky RSA tokens, right, stuff like that. So it's it's an entirely new market, and hopefully he's going to service the, the hacker market a little bit. I asked him to uh, produce the rings with uh, clear inlays, so you can kind of, like, show off your geek, some stuff like that. So I'm, I'm actually really kind of excited for both of those things together. I'm waiting for the NFC underpants, because those are going to be huge. Yeah, I don't... I don't know how much I'll get to use them, but you know. Hey. Well, I mean, you just got to rub your phone, and anyway. <laughs> Very nice. We'll uh, we'll leave that at that. And <laughs> and, and also talks. And with all of that, I want to thank you so much. And hey, you know, props to Rackspace for uh, for ponying up some cash for people to pwn you. Yeah, dude. I mean, I, you know, not many big companies would be willing to to do something like that on a whim, right? So it was really cool of them. All right, we will see you more from DefCon 2013. Stay tuned. Guys, I can't tell you how jazzed I am about our latest sponsors and how passionate I am about backups. That's right, I said backups. And your backups, they should be private. No, look, really private. None of this bogus, like, we store your private key in the cloud, you know? Or none of that, uh, you know, we work with the FBI to develop our cloud service kind of nonsense. I'm really sorry, guys, but no. Privacy should be number one. We're talking about sound crypt, uh, crypto when we talk about backups all the time. And this is why I'm so jazzed about CrashPlan because get this, they do it right. Not only do they have a free client that works on Windows, Mac, and Linux and Solaris. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? But you can use your very own Blowfish key. You know, that's, that's the open source cipher from Bruce Schneier. So this way, nothing ever touches the network without first being encrypted. And not only can you use their free client to back up to your own external hard drive for free but their secure offsite storage is truly unlimited I know because I've got like terabytes up there so as hackers as geeks as IT pros we know the importance of offsite backups and as hack five viewers get this we have a very special hookup we're getting a huge discount on their one-year unlimited plans they're normally $59.99 a year but if you use the special page over at crashplan.com slash hack it up, you're gonna get 20% off. That's unlimited backups for less than four bucks a month. It is never too soon to back it up, so I highly encourage you guys to take advantage of this and head over to crashplan.com slash hack it up. That just about wraps up this week's episode of Hack 5 and nearly the season. In fact, this right here, you know, wraps up eight years of an amazing eight years. I can't even begin to describe to you what's in my heart with all of that. I'm so glad that we were able to bring to you a fun episode last week. We got such great feedback on that. Uh, as of course, if you have feedback, you've got some stuff you'd like to see or want to let us know what you think. Feedback at hack5.org is the address. Uh, we hope you enjoyed the DEF CON coverage. We had so much fun at DEF CON this year. We've got big ideas for next year. And uh, we're also looking forward to wrapping up the season next week with some fun stuff from Hack Across America. Also stay tuned for the dates on that. I'm heading out again and uh, look out Boise, look out uh, Helena, Helena, Montana, look out Colorado, uh, Denver, um, where else? <laughs> going all throughout New Mexico. Uh, there's going to be back-to-back meetups in Houston, Dallas, and um, and Austin. Uh, maybe San Antonio as well. So uh, you know, look out Texas and. Yeah, thank you guys for making uh, Hack5 such a huge success. Uh, thank you to Revision3 for sending by a gift basket of uh, cookies for our eight year. And with all of that, I'm um, reminding you that next week, Shannon will be back in, uh, in, in studio. We've got some cool stuff going on at HackShop, H-A-K-Shop.com. That's where you can support us directly. And with all of that, I'm Darren Kitchen. I'll see you next week. I'm gonna make this thing go up. Ready? Here it goes. Bye-bye.